Uh, that's our goal, is that people would learn to apply the teaching. Uh, and why do we, you know, why do I insist on motivating with, peop with God's grace? Um, why is it most important that we motivate people with God's grace, nature, and grace? Because when people understand that God has the most beautiful nature and wonderful grace, you know, God is the most beautiful person. Person, I mean, not a human being, but He is God. He's the most beautiful person, has the most beautiful nature. He is very, very wonderful. He is uh, super wonderful. He is uh, full of grace and mercy and kindness and goodness and power and wisdom, everything. Everything that we look for, God has it. God is perfect in every way. So I hope that we all really are pleased with God. So when people understand how beautiful God is, then they will delight in God. That's the main point, that they will delight in God and will want to please God, want to do things to please God. Like for me, I'm very happy about God. I, I really like God. I like I see God in everything. In everything we eat, I can see God's wonderful creation of food. In nature, I can see the beautiful nature that God has created. Uh, in human nature, even though uh, human beings have sinned and therefore we have all kinds of problems, but still um, the inborn nature of uh, love and concern for people and uh, all people have the sense of righteousness. What is righteous and what is just? Although some people, you know, because of the sin, they, uh, they don't really follow the righteousness of God. But still, we have this nature. And this nature came from God. And uh, we can see the motherly love of people and, and uh, creation. And all this shows that God is wonderful. He is. He has created everything so wonderful and His heaven will be wonderful. And also everything is in, in His control. When people understand that everything we have and all blessings come from God, everything we have, our life, our body, our nature, all the food, uh, the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, all the plants, all these things came from God and all our blessings. So when people see that, they, they will be motivated to obey God because God has all the resources. You know, when we have God, when we love God, God will provide for us. There are many people who, you know, they don't, even when they believe in Jesus, they don't believe that everything they have come from God. You know, everything we have, uh, everything we have is not accidental. We don't have these things by accident. It's God who prepared all these things for us so that we can enjoy all these things. So we want to thank God for everything we have. It's, it's really wonderful. And He can give us more. He can give us more blessings and strength and provision and wisdom. Everything that we have, He can expand. Let me uh, use an illustration. You know, uh, like I play the piano and uh, actually I have only taken piano lesson for a year and but God has taught me well and also I have met a wonderful uh, teacher and I videotaped him I, I did not really you know have long time lessons with with him I videotaped him about three times and then I watch his video again and again and again and I keep practicing and then my piano skill improved. And then uh, one day I was practicing for a meeting and I was playing freely. And then I said, wow, suddenly when I play freely, I, I can play so well. And I thank God for that. And then I would say, how did I, how did I do it? How did I play so freely? So I um, uh, see how I'm doing. And I try to say, from now on, I want to play freely, like now, being uh, motivated by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can give us skills 
For instance, the teaching I have, how to be motiv- how to motivate people with God's grace, that how we can live in God's grace. This is all in the Bible. It's all in the Bible. It's not something I made up. It's all in the Bible. So I hope that we all see that it's all from the Bible. All the blessings is from God. And so we all appreciate God and say, God, you're so wonderful. I really want to follow you and obey you. And you will see how I obey you and you will, uh, you will bless me. Now, when people un- understand that we cannot run away from God, also we know that His nature, He watches over us. Every single person can never run away from God. Then we, don't, we, can, we dare not despise God. Now, some people think that, you know, um, uh, they take advantage of people and they don't obey God and they tell lies and they think that they can get away with it. They can never. Everything we do, now even though we do when we sin, we ask God to forgive us. He will forgive us. But everything we do uh, does carry a consequence. When people tell lies, they won't get the full blessings from God. When we love God and obey Him, then we'll get the full blessings of God. So I hope we all understand that. Now many of the people watching here are, are from Africa. That, you know, uh, Africa has many problems. I care about Africa. I want God's blessings to come to Africa. But it's very important that the African pastor and the Christians understand that when we love God and obey God and are honest to follow God, then we can, uh, then we can, God will bring blessings to Africa. That's the, that's the way Africa can be blessed by God. When the Christians really love God and obey God and are honest. And um, I have helped a number of groups to buy equipment to watch our, our, our uh, training online. And uh, some people took the equipment and they don't watch. And they think that they can, you know, take advantage of it. But actually, no. Uh, you are losing to God. God is not pleased with people who just take advantage of other people. And you will lose more and more. But when you are honest with God, when you are faithful to God and love God and obey God and serve God, God will be happy with you and bless you. So the best way to motivate people is not saying you have to do this, you must do this, you, I, uh, you are forced to do this. No. But it, the best way is that we see that God has the most beautiful nature and wonderful grace. He is so wonderful. And we have to learn to explore God's nature and grace from different Bible passages and from the whole Bible. And understand that everything we have and all the blessings come from God. So if we want blessings, we have to follow God. And also we cannot run away from Him. Nobody can run away from Him. Nobody can despise God. So I hope we all understand this and really follow God totally. Okay. Now this sermon outline, um, I hope you understand this and don't think that this is a limitation. This is a way to guide you so that you can talk about uh, different teachings fully. That you have the interpretation of the Bible passage and examples of how people don't live out and do live out this nature of God and God's nature and grace and then also why people don't live out this particular nature of grace. And then reminder and warning when they don't obey God, what will happen and how to obey God and challenge to people. Okay, let me use an example here. Okay, example of um, to care for the needy. Okay, that we should all care for the needy. Uh, that if we do one of these little things to Jesus' brothers, we are doing to Jesus. That's Matthew 25, the parable of the sheep and the goats. And examples that people don't live out uh, and do live out. Why live out this nature? Why, why do we talk about this now? The examples, I want to say this, you don't follow this name, but instead you say examples of 
when you have the theme that we care for the needy, the examples of people who don't care for the needy, and those who live for the, uh, care for the needy. Okay, examples is there are some Christians who see somebody in great need and they don't care about them. They don't want to help. They even despise them and hurt them. And so these are negative examples. And positive examples are there are some Christians who really care about the needy, care about the poor. Um, there are people who go to the, uh, the places where people are very poor and they will help these people and help them to believe in Jesus, help them to build up their life, and then their life will go better and better. So there are good examples. And then God's nature and grace. God Himself cares about the needy. He cares about the poor. He cares about every single person. That's His wonderful nature. And He gives us the motivation. Now, so you want to relate to this theme, to care for the needy. God motivates people to care for the needy. He gives us this compassion in our heart. When we believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit will work in our hearts. And He will give us this compassion for the lost. And this is something, a gift from God that He moves in our heart to motivate us that we care about people, that we want to uh, care about people. And then next is, this is transferable grace also, that we can train other people to care for the needy. And then when we obey God and serve God, He will reward us. So these are God's nature and grace to motivate people to care about people. That, you know, we don't just tell people, you have to care for the people. But we say, everything you have came from God. It's God who cares for you, who brought you up from nothing. That when we were poor, He brought us up. He provided for us. He, he gave us everything. So our life can go higher and higher. You know, I came from a very poor family because my father gambled a lot and that brought a lot of trouble to the family. But God provided for me that I can went overseas to have a uh, bachelor degree and two master degree in theology. That God saw my heart of serving Him. That God opened a way for me to be able to, to, uh, to study and then He provides for me so that you know, I can bless the pastors in Africa. And, and uh, actually, I've, I've been to 15 different countries in the world to do mission work. And God has provided for us. And we are very thankful. When we love God and follow God, He provides for us. That's why I would want to really follow God and serve God and bless people and care for the needy. So this is the way to motivate people, to let them see how God has blessed us in that particular area. This area is here, in this theme here is care for the needy. And then why some people don't care for the needy? So when you say it, you don't say why people don't live out this particular nature, but you say why some people don't care for the needy. Because they think that when they care for the needy, they will lose money, they will lose time. But actually, when God is pleased with us, He will bless us. He will give us what we need. He will provide for us more. You know, I, I saw this happen to me, and, I, and I've seen this happen to many people who, who wants to serve God, who wants to serve God uh, sincerely, and then God blessed them. But many people didn't see that. They thought that. They, you know, they, when they care for the needy, they will lose something. And then reminder and warning that, you know, the, uh, the Bible does warn us that when we see someone in need and we don't help, that is uh, a sin. That when we see something that we should do, but we don't do. In the book of James, something we should do, but we didn't do, that is sin. So warning that when we don't care for people, and Jesus has said, you know, blessed are those who have mercy upon people, and then God will have mercy upon them. And then when people don't have mercy upon people, then they don't get the blessings of God. And how to have compassion? 
So we want to look at how God has blessed us in the past, how we have been blessed, and how um, we, you know, in the past how He has blessed us, and then we look at how God has blessed different people who has uh, care for the needy, and then we uh, examine our hearts. What causes us to be selfish? What causes us to be not to care for people? And then we ask God to help us to care for the needy, uh, to give us strength and to remind ourselves when we care for the needy, God is very happy with us. So we can always remind ourselves when we care for the needy, God is very happy with us. So challenge to people, are you willing to start to care for the needy? And then God would be very happy with you and God will bless you. So. So I'm demonstrating how to use this, and uh, uh, each part of this outline has its uh, value. The interpretation of biblical passage is to let people understand the passage. The examples let people see how when they don't follow God, uh, the examples there are Christians who don't follow God in that way, and then God's nature and grace is the main part of the message to motivate people to to love God and obey God. So this is something we don't want to miss at all, that God's nature and grace. And then we want to examine why people don't live out this nature, because that will remind people what are the reasons, the hindrances, and the reminder and warning to tell people that when we disobey God, there will be serious consequences, and how. So is it, the two most important parts are God's nature and grace, and how. Those, these are the most, two most important parts. Thank you.